let's take a look at our top selections. Hi everybody, Mike Beer here with a look at the second of two graded stakes races on Saturday's card down at Churchill Downs. Race number nine is the Matt Wynn Stakes, a grade three for three-year-olds. They're going to go two-turn, mile and a sixteenth here at Churchill Downs. A um, couple of horses in this field dropping out of the Kentucky Derby. Those two horses, your two money line favorites. Let's take a look at the field right now. Uh, rate, uh, the eight-horse field entered for this for this Matt Wynn. Um, the two horses dropping out of the Derby, the, the number three, Obesos. Finished a pretty good fifth in the Derby, all things considered. I mean, it was a race that um, was sort of dominated up towards the front. Obesos, you know, generally a deeper closer. Got himself into pretty good position down towards the inside of the stretch. Thought he ran on very well in that race to be fifth. Uh, nothing wrong with that performance. He is your two to one morning line favorite. The number two helium was also in the Kentucky Derby. Big price in that race helium was after only one start as a three-year-old leading up to the Derby. Um, got forward in that race, which is where you wanted to be. Chased the winner, Medina Spirit, on the lead. Um, up the back stretch was no match for those horses in the stretch. Um, all in all, I guess you, you could say that he didn't run poorly, sort of splitting that field, um, finishing 10th, about five lengths behind Obesos. Nothing wrong with that performance. Um, probably finished right about where he was supposed to. Um, he could certainly improve in this race. They are... Um, they're the two horses to beat in here. I don't know any other way to say it. I mean, they're, they're, it feels like they found the right spot here, the, the right kind of race in this Matt win. We'll see um, how everything plays out for them because as we look at the time form U.S. pace projector, this could be a problem, probably more so for Obesos than it is for Helium. Time form U.S. Um, doesn't see a lot of pace in this race. Uh, I'm expecting this, the, the shape of this race to favor horses on or near the early lead. They have the six Hello Hot Rod. Um, out there on the lead, and that horse certainly does have some speed. We'll see if he's good enough to take advantage of it in here, but you just sort of feel like Helium will be forward in this race while Obesos, um, you know, he's more of a closing type, so we'll see what kind of trip he can work out in here. Maybe uh, at the end of the day, that could be the thing that decides it uh, between the two favorites, but we'll see. Um, you know, Obesos, he showed last time in the Derby in a race, obviously they went a little faster, but a, a race where you wanted to be forward, that he could get himself into position if need be. We'll see if he can do that again as the favorite in the Matt win. Let's start off by talking about ready to pounce the horse down on the rail. Um, he has a really good pedigree. It's more of a turf pedigree, uh, but it's a really good pedigree. A lot of uh, uh, quality runners in this, in this female family. This horse debuted sprinting on turf, and I like that kind of a debut for this horse, who probably is going to want to go longer. I mean, he made a nice run from way out of it um, to be gaining ground every step of the way. That was a pretty useful debut. A second start down at Keeneland got rained off the turf when they stretched him out, but we'll take a look at the replay right now because this horse runs pretty well in this race i like the ride that he got you know just sort of secured his position at the rail early in the race he came through on the inside around the second turn to go challenge for it um you can see the runner up was right there with him at the top of the stretch trying to get to him but this horse stayed on very well i thought he had a good finish through the final eighth of a mile or so to get clear um, sort of ridden out at the end. He was much the best in there. 86 buyer speed figure two. You know, again, it's more of a turf pedigree, but there, um, there are some horses in this family who performed on both surfaces and maybe um, ready to pounce is one of those. Obviously, he's going to have to improve in this race, but he could get forward in this race, get the right trip, take a step forward. He's going to be a price. Have to like all those things about him. The number two is Helium. Um, you know, we'll see what happens with Helium in this race. He, you know, I think there's still a lot more that we need to find out about him. Really good as a two-year-old, um, you know, down at, at up at Woodbine on the synthetic surface. Both of those races at seven furlongs. He showed good speed both times. Way better than those horses. Really impressive wins. His um, first start off the layoff was also his first dirt start, his first two-turn start. Um, a graded stakes race down at Tampa, the Tampa Bay Derby. You know, listen, he ran well in that race. The Tampa Bay Derby was not a strong race, um, but this horse had a lot working against him, it felt like, and he ran well in there. Always wide, carried a ton of ground in that race. Um, big move up to contention around the second turn, um, taken on through the stretch by the runner-up hidden stash, fought him off, and prevailed at the end. I thought, all things considered, um, just on the face of it, a really good performance for him. Um, the race hasn't been that strong. He came, they did not elect to get another prep into him for the Kentucky Derby. That seemed like a mistake. Um, he showed up at Churchill. Um, he did his very best. He got himself into position. He was no match for those horses. This is a better spot. Um, he's one of the horses to beat in here. The three is Obesos. This horse is just a really cool horse. Um, only um, two wins so far in his career. Both come sprinting, um, but he's run really well going long as well. Um, it just feels like he keeps getting better with every single race. I thought his Risen Star was, you know, okay. A race where he got a good enough trip and was no real factor in there, but just racing on at the end of that race. Um, he came back in the Louisiana Derby with a much better performance. Not a lot of closing going on in there, but this horse closed. He got a good run up the inside, but he made up a lot of ground to get up for third in there. Just missed second. 
um, over with Midnight Bourbon. Um, he just ran really well in the Louisiana Derby. And then he came back and I thought all in all his Kentucky Derby, you know, was fine. I loved the ride that he got in there, just sort of secured a spot about mid-pack after they got uh, through the stretch for the first time. Um, never really had a ton of traffic in there, but he put in a game run through the stretch. The top four finishers of that Derby, of course, just sort of lined up in the stretch and raced on. And this horse, you know, chased them home very gamely, I thought. I thought he ran well. He's a really cool horse. Um, he's going to need maybe a little bit of a trip in this race, but he might just also be the best horse. And I do think he's the horse to beat in here. Southern Passage um, was a horse who I thought was hard to make a case for the four. He's a big price on the morning line. The five, Folsom, is a Judmont homebred. There are things to like about this horse for sure. Um, started out on turf. He didn't win. He ran fine um, in his turf races. He didn't win any of his first four starts on that surface. Um, he got rained off the turf two starts back in April at Keeneland. Sloppy track. I liked that performance. 90 buyer speed figure winning that race. And I liked that performance just because he didn't break sharply from the rail. Um, but he had the speed to get himself forward and get to the outside. And then he just got a good trip after that. He kept up challenging forward around the turn. He took over, um, ran, raced off a challenger through the stretch and got clear with a pretty good late run. I liked his allowance when two back. He came back last time in the Oaklawn Stakes. We can take a look at that right now. This is a mile and an eighth. Um, I thought he ran well again in this race. Off the pace this time, but, you know, got clear, drove up to contention around the second turn. Right there, four wide at the top of the stretch, challenging for it. I just thought he stayed very gamely. I don't think this is a great field, um, but this horse stayed very gamely to prevail at the end. Another good performance that makes him now two for two rowdy on the dirt. And he's got pedigree. I mean, you know, um, into mischief, obviously, they can do anything. Um, this is a female family. There's a lot of turf, obviously. It's a Judmont family, but the dam, one on both turf and dirt. She's a sister to two really good horses. One of them, um, Tate's Creek, is a really was a really, really good turf horse, a multiple grade one winner on the grass. The other, Sightseek, was a major, major, major grade one winner on the dirt. So this horse has a versatile pedigree, has some tactical speed, goes for a top trainer. This horse is also five to two on the morning line like Helium. Um, so we'll see, you know, whether or not you want to take that kind of price on him is another question, I guess. But this horse is pretty good. He could obviously win this race. Hello, Hot Roger, projected pace setter in this race. They stretched him out around two turns for the first time last time in the Tessio. Just sort of went a, a, an even fifth in there after not getting to the early lead. He could get to the lead this time. That could make a difference. I'm still not convinced that he wants to go um, a route of ground, but we'll see. Um, the number seven is sitting on go. I'm still a fan of this horse. I don't think he wants two turns. He's another horse who, who doesn't have a lot of speed either. He's going to want to sit back and try to make one run. I think those things kind of work against him in here. I'm still a fan of his. Um, don't like him in this race that much. Game day play is the number eight. Just finished third behind Folsom last time. I didn't see the excuse for him in there. That was on a stretch out. Um, you know, his best race to me so far has been going seven furlongs in that clever Trevor. He won that in his final start as a two-year-old. You know, his races so far at three don't do a lot for me, and I don't really feel like he's a horse who necessarily wants to go this far. So I didn't like him. Um, I found it hard to, you know, go against the favorites in this race, and I did put Obesos on top. I just like him as a horse. I'm rooting for him in here. I hope he runs a good one, and they can get back up to some, some more major races for this horse um, as time goes on through the summer because I think this horse is pretty good, and I still think he's getting better. So I put him over helium. Uh, nothing clever for me. Uh, in this Matt win, I went three, two, five, and one. It's race number nine at Churchill on Saturday, approximate post time, 4.55. Good luck.